Greetings, beloveds. Beloveds, it is only the aspect of the mind that says that one is not worthy to experience love, love of pure divinity, love in every shape, love in every form, self-love, agape, eros, whatever form of love you could imagine, understand that the same way that the Eskimos have distinctions for snow, for this is the environment in which they live, understand that the angelic realm has distinctions for love, for it is the realm that they exist in, for there is an angel for each type of love that you could imagine in order to experience oneself. <laughs> Beloved, there are angels and there are demons, for how could you experience the light without the darkness? What you have been afraid of is the very thing that defines what it is that you are. Let us explain. Many of you have said that you are afraid of the devil. Many of you have said that you are afraid of Satan. You have envisioned this being, this red demon with horns and a tail who will come and skewer you with his pitchfork as an entity that can come and take a hold of you, that can make you do things that you don't want to do or allow you to do the things you want to do that you think you should be ashamed of. In similar ways, beloved, there is a belief in a God that sits upon a throne that is doling out wisdom or guidance or punishment, for these have been personified to be aspects of beingness, and you say, I am not worthy of this, or I am deserving this, I deserve to go to hell and be punished. I am worthy of going to heaven, for I have lived a righteous existence. Beloved, these are merely definitions within the mind of different aspects of beingness. There are as many angels that you can possibly imagine, the count of 144,000 to be exact, which can assist you in every endeavor and of deep, there are the popular ones, the ones that are known, angels, the archangels, the principalities. There are so many. But beloved, you must understand one thing and one thing only. You yourself are an angel. You yourself are worthy of the same divinity that every other being is. You yourself carry the Christ of consciousness. You yourself have had many incarnations through a series of stars and planets and epochs of time and there's only one thing that you are doing and that is gathering data to bring back to source and say i had this experience unlike any other and you are applauded and you are cheered and you are rewarded to go and live yet another day through this existence but beloveds please understand that you in your hearts and your soul know that you are worthy whatever it is that you can imagine whatever it is that you can create you are indeed worthy of. You have much to give. You have much to teach. Indeed, you have much to learn. But do not underestimate and indeed allow yourself to move out from what you have defined yourself with as a body and move out into the consciousness of creation. Expand yourself out and above and beyond the domicile. Allow yourself to be one at the highest realms, at the broadest and widest and deepest imaginings of the intelligence of light and life itself. But know that what you define yourself as, beloved ones, is the stories that you've told yourself of who you are and who you are not. What if none of it was true? What if it had all been a child's fantasy? What if the only thing that was true of you is that you yourselves are God? Mm. There will be a day that you will recognize. For when you say, I and Father are one, how could you be anything else? And God is that one that is known as the source of all love, of all creation, and of all beauty. So allow yourselves to do one thing and one thing only, beloveds, and that is to remember the divinity that you are. The precious, beautiful, joyful, and magical creatures that each of you are. But that is the truth of you. And you have just been on a vacation. <laughs> mm. 
Indeed, beloved, we love you, for we are you, and we are one with you always. Blessings to you, beloveds, and I will speak with you again.